Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lab. All right, we're coming in with this week's The Kings of Napa. This is episode three of the very first season, season one. Yeah. Episode is called, What's Port Got, Got to, to Do, do With It? it. <laughs> Port has a whole lot to do with it. Yeah, At 18% alcohol, and yeah, then yeah, my. people's truths start to come out. <laughs> People will start to get a little liquid courage. Uh -huh. We saw all of that tonight. Come on now. Let's go ahead and get into it. We started off by saying that this week felt a lot different yeah. than the other two episodes. And I think it's because now we're trying to really develop where these characters are, what their past history is with each other. Right. So we can start to understand what the dynamic is and why some of them have this power pool with each other. Yeah, because so, I was like, baby, I'm having a hard time following them yeah. now. So I was like, did we make a mistake? But That's it, what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but, it got, but it definitely but, started getting better. Yeah. All right, so we start off where we see this lady rolling up on this bicycle, right? As soon as I saw her, I was like, oh, hell, she coming <laughs> with it. Because I, from, from just seeing her, I read her life down. I said, she's in the crystals. She burns incense. She smokes blunts when, yeah, she, real, when she real stressed. <laughs> she knows how to grow any and everything that you could ask her about. If you tell her you got a headache, Yes, she indeed. knows the solution. Yeah, go so, in that old wisdom book and, oh, pull yeah. out, and pull out the remedy for you. She's my kind of girl. Yes, indeed. So come to find out that August had invited her, and she pretty much baited her back onto the estate by telling her, listen, I found this ring that you've been looking for, but it was all a lie. It was a way to get her back there because August wants her to be the person that develops the new port that she's on the line to make right. so that the kings can just go this way and not this way, you know? So homegirl was like, mm-mm, not doing it. I've uh -huh. hung up that coat. Yeah. That's not what I'm about. And she was like, come on, Grace. You're the best of the best. Like, you made wines for the Obamas that they, yeah. they, they still, still order it to this day. Yeah. And she was like, you got one bad review, you, and you, you just don't. You quit. Yeah. I said, well, it depends <laughs> on what the review was. <laughs> but that is crazy. I want to tell you, like, the same thing. Right. You go on Amazon, and it's like 50 yes. new reviews, and it's that one bad review. You be like, I don't know if I want to buy this thing. Ain't that crazy, though? It is crazy. That is crazy. So now we see that Mr. Dana has decided to hire this dude named Quincy and his yo-yo. Because I think <laughs> him and Quincy used to go to school together or whatnot. So Quincy is going to be at the house, but he's supposed to be like head of security or something like that. But really his job is to snoop around and try to figure out who it is that's trying to extort all of this money now out of August because... The daddy is no longer around yeah. to, to handle that himself. So, Mr. Quincy and his yo-yo, I'm going to move forward because there's not much to talk about when it comes to that. Came up with three people immediately that he thought could be one of the three people that's trying to extort this money. And one of them was the daddy had a beef with this guy that was in this um, Ponzi scheme. Yeah. Boom, that. Number two, Otis. <laughs> Otis been having a chip on this show since, <laughs> since episode one. Just running around just mad for no reason. Yeah. Especially when he came at Christian. Yes, he did. Yeah. I'm like, how the boy is supposed to learn if you never teach him? Yeah. If all you want to do is get out my face and skedaddle, no, keep him close by you so that he can learn unless you were hiding something. Hmm. And I don't trust people named Otis anyway. But anyway, so <laughs> the third one was this family that had sued the father for malpractice. They lost, but at the same time, they still didn't believe that the verdict was fair, and they would just had a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, sending, sending hate letters. Yeah, and things like that. So that's I, what Quincy came up. I with. think it's them as the ones that's uh, uh, that's pulling this because if I they did since they didn't win the the lawsuit, what another better way of getting the money? And maybe Otis is siding with them since he on the inside. Could be. And they just breaking him off a cut. We're going to see. We're going to see this thing together. Of course, it's going to be probably the last episode of the season when we figure it out after yeah. they went through all they got on my money. So then we see the mom, Vanessa. That's, a, that's her name, right? Vanessa. Vanessa. Yeah. Vanessa is trying to get into her late husband's laptop. Trying all the passwords, can't get in. She finally gets to that last attempt and she locked the freaking computer. So I was like, okay, so what you going to do? You you gonna do a you gonna do a reset? Like do you have his phone password where you can get into the email, reset it, let yourself in? She ain't do none of that. Mama decides, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. 
She decides to take her tail over there to her sister. What is this? Melanie's house. Melanie's house. And she's knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. And then we notice that she's not alone in this, as we never are. She, that this Karen on the street was. Uh-huh. And she I'm was saying, like, so I can't knock on someone's door. So Karen went up the street, and I was like, okay, Vanessa, you know there's a window of opportunity for her to circle the block, come yeah. back. And it's, call the cops. Yeah. That day go Vanessa don't slid her tail into the window of her sister's house, goes straight to the laptop, conveniently it was sitting right there, puts in her sister's birthday as the password, boom, computer opens. She said, yeah, my sister was so, not a not an organic bo um, bone in her body. Not you a creative need, bone in her body. <laughs> opens it up, and there's a picture on her desktop that click, click, and it was a horrible Horrible. Yeah, whoever did that Photoshop <laughs> job, y'all. Picture of Reginald, Lord. her. Ain't even look nothing like him. I said, why that bad? Because who that's supposed uh, yeah, to be? Like... <laughs> the only thing that made us put two and two together was that they were darker complexion. Melody is lighter. And then she says, but he hates the sand. He said he never liked the beach. I said, oh, so that is Reginald. I was like, oh, dirt. So then she starts to hear that someone is coming. Well, no, they're not in... um. They're not at Melanie's house because Melanie is staying with Bridget right now. So she broke in Bridget's house. Bridget's house, yes. That's right. So now she hears someone coming. She doesn't have enough time to get out. So she slides into the closet. Who's coming into the room, y'all? Huh. Auntie Yvette with her messy <laughs> self. And you, said for the, you said for the jump she was messy. Yeah, but I like all the messy yeah, aunt. Mm -hmm, yep. They good for something now. So they're sitting there chatting it up, as you all know from the previous episode. They ain't even supposed to be like that. Like Yvette told um, Vanessa that, yeah. you know, no, nah, nah, we, do we don't do that. I'm, I am here for you. You, uh huh. <laughs> but she's sneaking off and having a whole nother relationship. They going shopping and having talking, a good time. Somebody going to the club next week and so they can wear it. that stuff. Talking about Come Vanessa on. like a dog, talking yep. about something. She about to snap, crackle, and pop. <laughs> all this good stuff. So Van Vanessa's still in the closet, ear hustling all of this. So here is the pow to the god going wow, y'all. So Yvette and Melody is having a conversation about how they wish Reggie was still here. But if he was still here, all of this stuff would mm -hmm. not be going on. Right. But at the same time, I wish that y'all had never slept together. And here go... um. Um, Melody was like, well, if we had never slept together, I wouldn't have had Bridget. Bridget. And Auntie Yvette was like, you know, every time I look at that girl, I just feel so guilty because I know y'all probably I'm made dead. her at my, my house. house. Wait, <laughs> what? So you see Vanessa in the closet just crying her tail off because how? Such a... Big stab in the back. But I told my wife, I said, it's such a double-edged sword when it comes down to that. Yeah. <clears throat> because you got, she is, that's her brother. That is And her you brother. know most of the time, you know, you still. Brothers and sisters are like, like this. Yeah. And even even in marriage, is the same thing. They married and they still will stick with their brother or their sister more than their spouses. So, yeah. I, it's, it's hard to judge it, though. It, it is. It's so hard to judge it. It is. Like they say, blood is thicker than water, but at the same time. That's their individual relationship. They grew up together. Yes, y'all might be cool because he brought you into... Now, now, maybe the neutral ground is, hey, hey, brother, I love you. But and, I need to tell but, it. But I'm, but I'm not going to tell it, but I'm going to let y'all know you are, you ain't going to do that around me. You ain't doing it at my house, and y'all not going to do it in my presence. If you're going to do it in those two places, then I reveal it. How you, who you think, how you think that goes? That's fair. That's never going to happen, though. Right. <laughs> That's, That's right. fair, but it's never going to happen. I mean, what y'all think? I mean, y'all think it's a double-edged sword when a situation like that happen? It is. When it's family? But here's the thing. Because we are the kind of people that people just tell all they Everything tea to, to for no reason. Once it's told or it's known... You're already guilty either way it goes. Because you have someone's secret to hold. But I'm just so glad that but I don't know nobody that's cheating. 
Oh, I don't know that either. Yeah, I don't no. know nobody that's cheating. I don't want to know nobody that's cheating. Yeah, if you got that kind of secret, don't come to me with that bullshit. No, yeah. no, don't even tell me. You put out, start, I, I, no, don't even tell me, bro. I don't even want to know. <laughs> it's like, you need to go tell y'all the yeah, first time around. said, put you in a bad spot. Yeah, you put you in a spot that you can't, either you have to I'm, act like you don't know or you tell it. Case in point, Reggie gone, sister still here to deal with that bullshit. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So later on the episode, we see Bridget is now trying to move forward with her life and whatnot. And it's been over a month now. I'm like, darn, they move fast since she has not worked at the vineyard. So she runs into Rose, right? And mm -hmm. her and Rose has this cordial conversation. And I don't trust Rose. Well, I didn't trust Rose. And I'm like, okay, first of all, Bridget, stop talking to Rose about all of the things that you did, missed, and what you grew out there on the vineyard. Because don't forget, the kings are now kind of like an enemy of yours. Right. And they have this new product to produce. And you're telling Rose, standing there, that, listen, you know, I miss my job and everything, and I miss what we had, and I had this special grape that I made a hybrid out of that's going to make this special wine and whatnot. Shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> because if they don't fire you, they fired your ideas. For your, make that wine for yourself. Look, fire your ideas huh. or get Otis to go and clip, clip, cut, cut, bring you the grapes later. <laughs> because, no, don't be telling Rose none of that. But out of that, it came to a point where Rose was like, you know, I think we should have, or either way, they were, they came upon this idea that they need to get together, have dinner, you know, chat it up and whatnot. And at that very moment, I said, Rose looked like she had a twinkle in her uh -huh. eye. Yeah, for Bridget. For yeah. old Bridget. And yeah, I said, that's what I, I was like. Huh? How does how I does said, this going go? I said either she had that or she feel guilty about starting a relationship with her. Oh no. Because I mean, she really is going behind Dana and them back to have a relationship with. She ain't supposed to be dealing with Bridget. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so this is another stab in the back. So. Next thing we have is that August is sitting there, right? So now she has Grace out there creating, doing what she does in her element and in her vibe. <clears throat> and Grace was like, hold the hell up. Here, August, who's dude that's over there in my <laughs> workspace saying that he's been brought on by Dana to create another <laughs> dessert wine? What is this? So here it is that Dana done found somebody <laughs> to come in. Preston. To to do, to create a wine that's cheaper, easier to make, more scalable. And less expensive. <laughs> but I'm going to say, though, I'm, I'm going to say this. I love grapes, and I have no doubt that she can make some good <laughs> wine. But sending taxes every single day, I About need $5,000 right? for this and 5000 That's a lot of goddamn money. To be asking for, I'm sorry, over that short period of time. So I, but I that's kinda, what you brought me here for. But no, Dana ain't bringing them here. Uh, Dana, August brought them there, but Dana just writes checks. But it was starting to look like she was flexing. Like now that I'm here, I'm gonna spend y'all money the way I want to spend y'all money. I mean, that's basically why they asked her to come there. Uh, yeah. She got, she has a way to do things. What y'all think? She, the way that she was sending them texts. If I gotta bake a cake. I'm going to need you to get all the ingredients for me to make this bomb AK. No, it, that's right. So you can go and I can buy the ingredients once and supply them to you to finish. No, I ain't saying uh, part the ingredients today and you send me another text and need some more ingredients. But buy. if I know you cheap, I got to break it up in sections. She should have sent one text and said, I need X <laughs> amount of money to finish this project and stop sending the text in pieces. So now August and Dana... <laughs> Is at a war with each other, but I laughed my tail off when she snatched Dana up and dragged him around that corner like yeah. a three year old. And she was like, What are you doing? And he was like, Listen, I'm the numbers guy, I'm the person that's over the finances. I have this dude that can do what it is that we need to be done cheaper, more effective. You over here got this wine that we really can't scale. People came out with one glass of it at a time because it's gonna be so daggone expensive. Why don't we just let's let's do a vote? So let's do some top shelf up in this bitch. <laughs> so let them both pull out their best thing. Their, what was that? My your, Apple Watch. Oh, <laughs> your best creation. I was like, somebody trying to roll up? <laughs> their best creation, and we'll have the family to vote. In the event of a tie, they come to find out that Bridget now takes the father's vote and is the one that gets to break the tie. I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> at that moment, 
You saw that August and Dana was like, oh, hell no. We got to get to Bridget. We got to get to Bridget. Now, mind you, Bridget is pissed at August because yep. August is the one that fired her. Right. So August, though, she's already at the disadvantage with the vote if it comes down to her having to break the tie and whatnot. We'll get there. So we see that Rose came on over to Bridget's house and, you know, they had this creative talk and whatnot. And I was like, oh, boy. Rose don't got to look too close to her on this couch. No, like slide, slide over, like Ricky Smiley said, slide over. <laughs> Maybe my mind was just going somewhere. By the way, Rose is beautiful. Like I was yes, looking at is. her, I was like, that is a beautiful woman. Because not everybody can pull off a low haircut. No, but there are I mean, some, there's some queens that can pull it off. And she she does of, it, and everything yeah, she, she wears is just. I was like, that is a beautiful. Everybody on here is beautiful, but that Rose. Flawless, without effort. <laughs> so um, she's sitting on the couch with Bridget and they're having a conversation about their voices and having their creativity being spoken out loud. When Bridget asked that magic question, are you passionate about being in PR? And that's kind of what spun everything. It spun everything. Yeah. <laughs> and Rose was like, I oh, like what I do. But I like being a writer. writer. Like when mm-hmm. I'm a, when I write, that's how I get my juices flowing. It's <clears throat> it's how I present myself in the world. Those are my words. When I'm PR, I'm speaking what everyone else needs to hear. Right. So Bridget went on to tell her that when I come home, I I I create with my art. That's my outlet to get my voice out here heard. And at some point, they were trying to compare her work to someone else's, and she was like. No, I ain't back down because right. they think that my work looks like somebody else's. I put my own spin on it, yeah. and I let my work, you know, speak, speak for, for itself. It yeah. speak for me. So you continue to find a way to speak your voice, have your voice heard and whatnot. I said, this is about to come out at the worst time ever. <laughs> but it is who so August and Dana finally did get over there to Bridget. And Bridget was like, first of all, in so many words, F y'all. But um, if it comes down to it, y'all will see how this thing goes and whatnot. Yeah, you know, I'm going to pick the best wine. The best wine, yeah. regardless. I said, no, you're not. You're going to pick the wine that's against August. So then we see, because you know Miss Vanessa was not going to let Yvette oh. get away with anti, <laughs> I mean anti, of that skit that she heard while she was in that closet. So we see them sitting at the table eating dinner, and we're thinking, oh, this is about to be another epic family dinner. Listen, yeah. there's not too many more family dinners that we can have. <laughs> I looked at Power, and we did our review on Power on last yeah, week. Yeah, man. I thought we were going to have another said, Diana. I said, dirty Diana, a little bomb in there, buddy. <laughs> I said, oh, God. She's about to let the whole family know mm-hmm. that Yvette pretty much was <laughs> assisting her brother to a bus down at uh-huh. her house. But no, this was a private dinner for the two of them. She was like, you know what? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, pretty much in so many words, I was in the closet today. No, but she let Yvette lie for like yeah, a yeah. good five uh-huh. minutes. Where were you today? She's like, oh, I was oh, working on this. And I was out doing meetings. my sales and meeting with marketing people. Selling oh, I, my was, I was having a good time and this, that. And I was <laughs> so busy in meetings. <laughs> and you out there just lollygagging and having a good time with Melody. So she was like, let me go ahead and tell you like this. I don't appreciate this. I don't appreciate that. Oh, do you hear that? Those are movers. It's like, <laughs> movers? Who's moving out? Who's moving out? You. You're moving out. She said, I cannot stand another night to see your silk bonnet, satin bonnet, <laughs> oh on my, my good Egyptian, Egyptian sheets. sheets. You got to go because what you're not going to do in so many words, you're not going to assist my husband in cheating on me with my own sister and have the audacity to lay up in this house every night. And I said, Yvette, you mean to tell me all these years, see, see, you're not as old school as you think you are because you didn't have another basket set up. So Yvette and her wigs and Jesus got put out the house. Since when black people have another bag set up? Well, you know Stop when it. they move in your house. Stop it. They think they there forever. That is true. Yeah. Whatever you, yeah. So Yvette gets put out. Where does she go? Now she over there <laughs> couch surfing over there at Bridget's house. So Bridget got now her mama at the house. 
and Aunt Yvette. And Aunt Yvette talking about something. I ain't going to be here but a few days, baby, because I do not like this arrangement right here. I got to figure out a way to get back over to the Kings. So over at the Kings, now you have August and Dana. I'm not going to talk about everything because everything ain't important in this um, episode. They're over there trying to coerce everyone to vote for their wine, regardless yeah. of who's better or not. Yep. You need to you vote, vote for, for me mine. because mine is going to do this. It's going to take the, the <clears throat> company this way, not that way. Everybody has a position to play and whatnot. But Yvette also has to come back to vote. Now, I mean, to cast her vote as well. She can't be at the house, but Vanessa said, you're not fired. You just can't stay yeah, here no more. But yeah, I but said, well, that's fair, but you ain't do you Bridget, do Bridget like, like that. that. Yeah. She ain't even live that. Yeah. And Bridget ain't have nothing to do with Bridget. Ain't She's the one a that's product. Yeah. So the one that was hiding it from you get to still keep their job. Right. Make that make sense, yeah, Vanessa. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, we get to this point where mm, 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 we start getting to the point where it's time to vote on these wines. So we have the wine, and I was like, maybe I'm a newbie when it comes to wine, real facts. Me too. Every port I've seen looks like grape Kool-Aid. I said, that don't look like the port I know. I said, I need to expand my palate. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I need to I go to Cooper. tail port. I need to go to Cooper Hawk a town, little bit more town often. Towny port. Yeah, we need and to go Ru to... And Ruby port. Yeah, we need to go to Cooper's Hawk and do another taste. And yeah, we, we got to do that. Expand yeah. our palate and whatnot. Because I was like, that's some light-looking port. Mm -hmm. But maybe because it was new and fresh and just made. Yeah. Is that it? Y'all let me maybe know. Maybe the grapes had had time enough to age long enough. But... You presenting the wine so people to drink, for them to drink the judge, so it should, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. We're amateurs. Don't listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> so comes a point where everybody gets the wine. They taste August wine, and they were like, "Ooh, like this is." Mm -hmm. So Grace did her thing with that, with that creation that mm -hmm. she made and whatnot. So get over there to where it's time for Preston. You know what? I'm gonna back up. Because something important is about to happen, and I forgot to tell y'all something important back here. When, what's her name, Lord Vanessa was putting Yvette out. Yvette was trying to <laughs> trying to state her case, and was like, "You cannot put me out. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know that everyone tells me their secrets, <laughs> even you. Like I kept your secret, your surgery. I never told anybody about that. I never told anybody about how you were in Jamaica. You got scammed out and, of and, and Kingston. In Kingston for that waterfront property, and I never <laughs> told anybody that you wanted to abort Dana. And Dana walks up. In walks Dana. Dana, mom, you, you wanted, wanted to, to abort, abort me? me? I was like, first of all, why y'all write that in the script? Why y'all write that in the script? That's that's real devastating to a kid, man. That you ain't want me? Yeah. So Dana storms off, and he has had it. Like, he done locked himself in, in his office, ain't came out. His wife can't get him to come out, no nothing. So back at the tasting, because that's going to come into play. They, they taste Dana's wine, and they drink it. But nobody's really saying anything. Yeah. So I said, well, how is this about to go? So we get to a point where it's not, now it's time to vote. Christian, he was like, you know what? My sis did her yeah. thing with this. I'm going to vote for August. Boom. Get to Auntie Yvette. Auntie Yvette was like, you know, this, that, and the third. But at the end of the day, I got an expensive taste, and I like how it hits right here. We're going to go with August. So then we get to the mom. The mom was like, you know what? I love both of my children. Christian was like, both? I mean, all of my children. I said, is Christian adopted? <laughs> like, what's happening here? Because you, like, just forgot that he was this even This whole there. family is a mess. So she was like, I love both what of my children. Money. And, you know, I love you, son. <clears throat> and I'm so pretty much in so many words, she's chumming up to him because... She know that he just heard the most devastating thing yeah. in his life. So I said, I know how this vote is going to go. But like you said, I said, they shouldn't have never told him who's wine who's and was who. who. It should yeah. have been a That automatically created a bias right there. Yeah. A blind tasting is what yeah. it should have been. So, of course, because she's trying to get back on Dana's good side, she votes for Dana. So then we're like, they're like, well, now we have to break the tie. And I'm like, one, two, three. Like, there ain't no tie. Yeah. Like, what is going on here? So then they get Bridget's vote. So then Bridget votes for Dana out of spite mm -hmm. because, come on now, 
She creates wines. She knows what an expensive, good blend wine, wine yeah. is supposed to taste like. You're going to put Dana's as the winner of this? Ain't no freaking way. Ain't no way. Oh, at this point, she don't care. She fine. She ain't got no job. She, not only is she fine, baby. <laughs> she's sitting there really voting on who's going to replace her <laughs> at this point. Yeah. At this point. So, Dana is celebrating because he was like, yes, yeah, yeah, bum, I won, bum, yeah, I won, yeah, I won, yeah. I won. So, then someone was okay. like, but we haven't heard from Rose. Rose. So, the guy that's overseeing the vote is like, well, we know oh. Rose is going to vote for her husband. Like, she always votes the way that Dana wants her to vote. I said, that's shady and yeah. very disrespectful. But if that's, if that's, that's the, the way presence, they rose. Yeah, the presence that you did can only go by the history that y'all have done. Right. So Roses was like, Dana, you know I love you. I really love you. She's like, oh, skit. But the direction of this company and the legacy of this company and what we stand for is of top-notch wines. That is not it. I know, I know. And he, she voted against him. Yep. And he proceeded to belittle her rip her apart and told her that she was nothing but a perfume girl spraying CK1 at the mall when he found her. Yep. I said, wait a God, do a minute. So, um, Dana, I'm going to say something really rude. <laughs> but she should have took her kneecap and, and kicked your head, knocked your head back. <laughs> knocked your head, her move back. Really, Dana? This is what we do. You're going to belittle your wife because she you wasn't a yes man to your yeah. idea? Yeah. Like, she has no originality of her own? And, you, and you're and you over the financial part of the company, and you don't understand the brand of the company. Yeah. So she quoted back to you what the brand was. The father was building a high-end label type of wines, <laughs> and they put their advertisement right. in high-end magazines. Right. Now, you want to take some, some uh, uh, Moet type of wine... Because I don't know why, so I know Moet is expensive. Yeah. And try to put some Barefoot or some Sutter Home. <laughs> wild Eyes the, Rose. Yeah, in, in the magazine. You put some Wild Eyes Rose. you just put Moet. I said, what? Dana, what? And they were telling, they were encouraging Rose, speak your truth. Mm -hmm. Use your voice. And that I was said, all Bridget's fault, though. She got that all from Bridget. Yep. And I said, for the one time that, that um, Bridget didn't use her voice, it backfired and somebody else spoke it. Because ain't no way in the world that Dana's why I'm uh, one when it came to Bridget. No. So, that's basically where we are with this episode. I think that that is a good summary of well, episode three. One last piece. Oh, no. That dude that Dana hired to do the snooping around, now that he done lost, he got that dude to go and oh, dig yeah. up all the dirt on he can August. find on August so he can sabotage us so he can be the CEO. Come on, bro. That's your sister. That's your sister. Because even the auntie was like, y'all used to like be uh, really calling big. your mama and daddy so y'all get the plane and go to Jamaica. What happened to that? Why they ain't come pick me up? Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite country, yo. So, yeah. I don't know. I think Dana's going to destroy this company, man. He is because he's spiteful. He got something to prove. He already has a chip <clears throat> on his shoulder about the dad because yeah. he said that the dad never saw him as a real man because he could look him eye to eye. So now you have this little man complex that now you're taking out on everybody else that doesn't see you the way that your dad saw you. Right. They see you as just the brother. Yeah. It it's, it's nothing like that. Another prime example of when power corrupts. Y'all got all this money. Live on that. Well, nice they don't estate. really got a lot of money. <laughs> well, you well, you are living a lifestyle better than a lot of people that's middle class. Right. And y'all can can't come on the same page. To grow the business and to continue to be successful. You can't make this. Because you want power. And on that note, we'll see y'all on next week. Yeah, straight from the Viet. The dirty, dirty south. Two up. Two, Two down. down. Holla boo. <laughs>